Hi Loving Good Earth Scientists and welcome to our video lecture on igneous rock. You should have in front of you your igneous rock graphic organizer and notes sheet. It's a little um, half sheet that is pink and you should be able to fill that out while we go through this PowerPoint. So igneous rocks form from the cooling of molten rock. So you have to have that cooling process and you have to have molten rock. Now there are two types of molten rock. It can either be lava or it could be magma. And all of these terms have to do with igneous rock. And by the end of this PowerPoint and the end of our discussion on igneous rock, you should know where each of these terms fall. Um, on this diagram. So right now they're not currently in the correct place, but this is something we will look at in class and we'll move them around to see that you understand. So are lava and magma the same? Lava is molten material that has found been found on the surface of the earth. So lava is when it has erupted from the volcano. Okay, you know I'm big on memory clues. Lava has a V in it which means that it has come from the volcano. It's on the surface of our earth. Magma refers to any type of molten material that is found beneath the surface of the earth. So when it's still inside the earth and it's still under the volcano waiting to come out, we call that magma. And when it has erupted, we call that lava. Now, igneous rocks can be classified by how they form and really by where they form. So an extrusive rock is formed from lava that has erupted onto Earth's surface. So an extrusive rock is formed when it has exited the inside of the Earth. Basalt is a common example of an extrusive igneous rock. Intrusive igneous rocks form when magma hardens or cools beneath the Earth's surface. And our memory clue there is intrusive rocks form inside the Earth. A common example of an intrusive igneous rock is granite. Okay, here's an example of um, granite igneous rock, intrusive igneous rock, Mount Rushmore. Now, obviously, it's no longer in side the earth, it has been uplifted, but when it was formed, it was formed inside the earth. Another common example here in Georgia is Stone Mountain, which is again granite that formed inside the earth and has been uplifted and some weathering um, has caused us to see it. Okay, igneous rocks can be classified by their texture. If the rock is fast cooling, it would be made from lava and it would be considered extrusive. Now, if we think about that, when, when lava exits the earth, it's cooler on the surface of the earth than it is inside the earth. The inside of the earth is extremely hot, okay? So it's going to cool much, much faster on the surface, okay? And so what we say is that a fast cooling extrusive rock is going to be fine grained. It's going to have these itty bitty small crystals and it's going, to, it's going to be very smooth or more smooth than what we might find in an intrusive rock. Sometimes it cools so quickly that it's actually kind of a glassy look to it. It's so fine grained. The crystals are so small it's almost glassy. And think of like um, sandpaper fine-grained sandpaper is a little more smooth than a coarse-grained sandpaper because the crystals on fine-grained are smaller. And igneous rocks can form from slow-cooling magma because it's inside the earth. It's much, cool, it's much hotter there. So it, it will cool off and it will harden and it will make a rock, but it takes longer. So the crystals have much more time to form. So you're going to get larger crystals and we call those coarse-grained rocks and they're a little more rough feeling than an extrusive fast cooling um, rock. 
So just something to think about. An intrusive igneous rock would have what type of texture? And go back to your notes and look at that and you should be able to answer that. It would be coarse grained. It would have large crystals. Okay, It would be smooth but it would be more rough than, than, the, in, than the extrusive. Okay, It is hotter in the earth than on the outside of the earth. So it takes longer for magma to cool down. So that's just a review of what we've went over. An extrusive igneous rock would have what type of texture and why? It would be fine grained or a glassy texture. And it's cooler on the surface of the earth so the rocks can cool off faster. And rocks can be classified by their mineral composition. So sometimes you'll hear us talk about mafic rocks and these rocks are dark in color because they have small amounts of silica which is a type of mineral composition and um, an example would be basalt and then felsic rocks are light colored because they have higher amounts of silica and an example would be granite. Granite is made of, these are just some common uh, igneous rocks and we know that all rocks are made of minerals so granite is made of the minerals feldspar, mica, quartz, and hornblende. Rhyolite is made of feldspar, mica, quartz, and hornblende. And obsidian is made of quartz, iron, and magnesium. You do not have to know this. You do not have to memorize this. This is just, again, talking about our standard that rocks are made of minerals. And we'll look at some of these rocks and see some of the mineral components in class. How do we use igneous rocks? Again, you don't have to know this, just some information. We can use them in, in tools. They used to be used um, many, many years ago uh, for tools to help um, kill animals and things because igneous rocks are fairly um, hard rocks. We use them in buildings, for streets, for bridges, gravel, cleaning, polishing, gardening. And again, this is just a, a quick overview. Igneous rocks, we classify them by where they form and if they're made of magma or lava. Okay, We classify them by how they cool. They cool slow. It has large crystals. If they cool fast, they have smaller or even no crystals. And we can classify them by what they're made of, if they're felsic or if they are mafic.